welcome to this video course on simulating waveguides using the ANSYS Electronics Desktop student version or AEDT student for short. Let's go right into the world of waveguides. And they've been around since the early 1930s. They were initially developed to transmit telephone signals from one point to another. And waveguides were the preferred method of communications before the advent of what we know as wireless technology. And a waveguide can take on many different physical forms. It could be a simple wire to a hollow metal rectangular or circular structure. And it can even be an optical fiber or air transmission, wireless. And as engineers, we like exact analysis. And with a hollow metal rectangular or circular waveguide, we can derive the exact math-based equations to describe them. Plus, they're easy to manufacture, but they do feature high power handling capabilities, which is what we want. An air-filled waveguide, for example, can handle more power than a waveguide with a center conductor of the same dimensions. And by pressurizing that air waveguide, that empty waveguide with gas, we can achieve even higher power handling capabilities. An air-filled waveguide offers low loss and higher signal speeds, making them ideal for even satellite communications, radar, antenna feeds, communication links, 5G, 6G+, and of course, there are trade-offs to consider. Replacing air with some dielectric can make a waveguide smaller, but the dielectric slows down the signal speed. Ultimately, that application or that use model guides the design, and we must analyze and determine the propagation conditions, the cutoff frequencies, and the propagating modes using exact analysis with the governing equations and through electromagnetic simulation as well, both. Electromagnetic signals are confined within the metallic wave walls of the waveguide and propagate down the length, obeying Maxwell's equations. And only certain modes can propagate in a waveguide. Two main types of modes that do propagate, they're TE transverse electric or TM transverse magnetic. The assumptions used to analyze that waveguide are that it's infinite extent along the z-axis and has a uniform cross-section along its length. It can be made of a perfect electrical conductor. It can be filled also with a lossless dielectric and lossless will result in a purely imaginary propagation constant, zero attenuation constant. So let me show you a TE10 mode and a rectangular waveguide in AEDT HFSS and a TM1 mode in that same waveguide. And for that cylindrical waveguide, here's the TE11 and the TM01 mode. But it's just not about how well you can do that math and how you can calculate the results. You need to connect the math with some physical design. And with the electromagnetic simulation, such as AEDT student version, we can visualize the electromagnetic fields of the different propagating modes without doing the math. And with simulation, we can explore many different physical model design options. For example, what do you want to shorten or lengthen the waveguide dimensions? What happens? And without actually manufacturing those options, you save money to manufacture and time. Simulations is easy. So whether you're a seasoned AEDT user or a newcomer to the interface, go ahead, check out the intro to ANSYS HFSS on our ANSYS Innovation Space course. Click on the link on the screen to the top right. And before we dive into the next lesson with the exact analysis and the math behind the mode propagation in a rectangular waveguide. Thank you for joining us in this exciting journey into the world of waveguides and simulation. And for more information on AEDT HFSS or any of the ANSYS simulation tools, Visit ansys.com forward slash courses today.